Hi, my name is Apurva Gopi Sethi. I'm a PhD student at the German Cancer Research Center in Heidelberg, Germany. Today I'll be presenting our work on the ITCCP4 consortium project focusing on the analysis of high throughput omics data of pediatric cancer, patient derived xenograft models, and patient tumors. Childhood cancer still remains to be one of the leading causes of deaths of children between the ages of 5 to 14. Although cure rates have increased to 80% over the last decade, there are limited treatment options available for 25% of the children who experience relapse. Compared to adult tumors, pediatric solid tumors exhibit a lower tumor mutational burden, well-defined oncogenic driver genes, and a high intertumoral heterogeneity. The main aims of the ITCC P4 consortium are to establish a cohort of approximately 400 PDX models to molecularly characterize the low coverage whole genome, high coverage whole exome data, RNA-seq data, methylation data, um, for the matching primary tumor and their germline controls thus enabling the identification of suitable biomarkers for future clinical stratification of patients across different entities. The PDX models are established by orthotopically or subcutaneously injecting surgically resected patient tumor into immune deficient non sid gamma mice. This tumor can be from primary metastasis or relapse tumor. Looking at our current cohort overview, we have 252 PDX models fully established from 246 different patients, scanning over 13 major cancer entities. Based on tumor diagnosis, the relapse samples from the PDX and the patient tumor make up majority of our cohort, followed by the primary tumor from the PDX and the patient tumor, and then the metastasis tumor. As you see, this is quite a diverse and a massive cohort that we're compiling. The brain tumors have 182 models, which make up majority of our cohort. We've collected the low coverage whole genome, whole exome, RNA-seq, and methylation data for most of these samples. For the 17 non-brain tumors, although we lack the matching germline controls for some samples, we do have the methylation, whole exome, whole genome, affymetrix data, and the RNA-seq data of the samples. For the preliminary results of our data analysis, we looked into the mutational landscape of the whole exome samples which had matching germline controls. The ependymoma samples showed a B-core mutation with the methylation profiles, we could further classify them into their subgroups. The high-grade gliomas and their different subgroups were defined primarily by the TP53 mutation, followed by SNV and SV mutations of the PIK3CA, MCN, H3F3A genes. The medulloblastoma samples showed a TP53, P10, and SUFU focal deletion, along with the classical mutation of MIC and BRAF. The rhabdoid tumors were defined by the classic MARCB1 mutation. The rhabdomyosarcoma samples distinctly clustered into their two subgroups. The RMS alveolar subgroup was defined by the classic PAX3 FOXO1 fusion along with TP53 mutations and also showed focal amplifications of the CDK4 gene. The RMS alveolar subgroup showed focal amplifications of NCOA2 and deletions of CDKN2A, B-Cor, and TP53. The Ewing sarcoma samples were defined by the classic EWSR1 fly fusion, except for one sample that showed an EWSR1 FEV fusion. Samples also showed a deletion in CDKN2A and STAG2 genes, along with the TP53 mutation. Next, I analyze the variant allele frequencies of all the samples, which enables us to identify shared coding SMVs between patient tumor and the PDX models, and also identifies SMVs unique to either the PDX or the patient. This also helps us understand clonal evolution. I then run a tool called Estimate that provides scores for tumor purity 
the level of stromal and immune cells present in the tumor tissue based on the RNA-seq data. Low the estimate score infers higher tumor purity. The VAF plots enable us to identify interesting samples like this one, NB006, which had a MIC and focal amplification, which can also be seen in the copy number plots. The GP53 SNV showed an allele frequency of 0.45 in the patient tumor, but increased to 0.9 in the PDX model. This can be accounted for by the copy number neutral loss seen on chromosome 17p in the PDX. We're running iCore CNV and Sequencer to further analyze the copy number profiles of all the sub samples to see how well the PDX recapitulate the patient tumor events, but we're also interested in novel events occurring in the PDX models to identify potential druggable targets. Analyzing the methylation data, we're using our in-house brain and sarcoma classifiers to further distinguish the samples into their distinct subgroups. Methylation-based inferred tumor purity is also comparable to the RNA-seq estimate scores that confirm the PDX models have a higher tumor purity than the patient tumor. As you can see, this is a massive project we're working to integrate as much omics data as possible to see how well the PDX models recapitulate patient tumors. We've currently established 250 PDX models and aiming for more in the coming future. Huge thanks to all my co-authors and all our collaborating academic institutes and pharmaceutical partners to make this project feasible.